they looked at the most successful men and women of the world and they found that they had like seven, eight things in common. And one of the things they all had in common was a routine. They are obsessed with their routine. They don't have a gap of wasted time they would take. You know, I realized the reason why I'm so successful and the reason why I don't get in trouble like I used to when I was younger is because when I was younger, man, my schedule had so many gaps in it. The devil had like, okay, he might pray at six, but my man is watching TV. He playing video games by 8.30. It's not that I'm sweeter than nobody. The devil can't get to me because all my time is taken up. And by the time he get to me, I'm asleep. I'm too sleep to out the sin. I'm just being real, 8.30, he's like, Eric, you should. I'm like, bro, I'm tired. I get, come back to me tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? Like, tempt me tomorrow, bro. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm good. The, my body said, all you gotta do is put your shoes on. That's the hardest thing you gotta do. Just put your shoes on and I'll do the rest. I can't put your shoes on for you, but put your shoes on and then just go. And I just went and I, I was walking for the, I do the tw uh, 11 incline boy. And I was just walking for an hour. And I was just like, you know what? It's almost an hour. I don't feel like running. My body was like, don't worry about it. We'll get to that when we get to it. I did my hour, I was about to get off. My body was like, you know we run now. I said, what? We run now, let's go. You ain't tired? I said, I am tired. No, you're not, you just walked for an hour. You're not tired, Eric. Your brain is telling you some dumb stuff. If you were tired, you wouldn't have been able to walk for an hour. Okay, so let's do this, just run for two minutes. I'm trying to help somebody right now go to a whole other level. The, Bible, the, the reason why you go back to sleep is because you've always gone back to sleep. It's like a default. You, you go back to sleep because you always, all you got to do is stop going to sleep and then you're going to stop going to sleep. All you got to do is stop fussing and cussing and then you're going to stop fussing and cussing. All you got to do is stop spending all the money you got and start saving it. Listen to me. I became number one in the world. I became a millionaire not because I made more money. I became a millionaire because they told me millionaires only live off of 30% of their income. I want to make it plain for you. I became a millionaire because I did what millionaires did. I stopped living off 100%. I paid my tithe and then I was like, all right, E, you only got 20% left. Put the rest up. So the first thing I did, listen to me, the very first thing I did to become rich, somebody said, E, to be rich, put six months of your earnings to the side. So I was like, all right, bet. That's what the rich told me to do. So I put six months to the side. How long did it take? I don't remember, but I put it to the side. Then somebody was like, yo, E, you need to put 100000 to the side. I was like, all right, 100000 DD, we're going to put 100000 to the side. Then somebody was like, yo, you need to get your credit score up to 800 I was like, all right, get my credit score up to 800 Then somebody said, E.T., if you want to be Tony Robbins, there's no way you'll be able to be like those dudes when you don't have the language they have. You need to go get your master's and a PhD from a white institution. I said, what? I went to Oakwood. I went to HBCU. He was like, yeah, but you didn't learn the language of Zig Ziglar at Oakwood. So Oakwood is a phenomenal place. Oh, y'all not hear what I'm saying. I just said something, you missed it. Now you need to go to Michigan State University. CJ, where's my, you see my master's degree anywhere? What about my PhD? Not in the office, not at church. You ain't seen it in my house. I didn't go to Michigan State to get a PhD. I went to Michigan State to learn the majority language. Listen to me very closely. When you graduate and you get a job, if you want to get paid, you never say no. You never say it can't get done. Don't you ever say out your mouth it can't get done. Even if you feel in your heart it can't get done, you don't say it out loud. You let the broke folks say that. You let the folks they find first say that. You always say it can get done. Even if you don't think it can get done, just say it and try to make up something. But every time I put on a dress shirt and button it up, I just feel, and I hear people say all the time, man, you look like you dressed to success. I'm like, is putting on a shirt and a tie dressed for success? I'm dressed for success. I'm getting paid. I'm dressed for success. I'm not dressed like he dressed, but I'm dressed the way I feel comfortable. I feel good being me. I feel good not to have to, like, not, not only can I say no, I don't have to explain why I said it no more. It feels good being me, because guess what? I can never be sweet being you. The majority of you are poor because you read poor stuff. You watch poor stuff. Bro, you just scrolling through like you ain't got a light. For real, some of y'all on Instagram, you're on there for 30 minutes. If I ask you what you saw, you don't even know. You're just scrolling through. 
Rich people don't waste time. They realize it's their most important commodity. They don't watch a lot of TV. They don't do a lot of entertainment. If they're not working, they're studying their craft and getting better at their craft. So I need you to stop having the poverty mindset. So when I quit my job to be an entrepreneur, my mom was like, whoa, what are you doing? I was like, I'm quitting. My mom was like, don't you dare quit. You're gonna embarrass me. You got a wife and kids. Does YouTube have insurance? Does YouTube have a 401k? And I was like, yo, mom, I ain't trying to be funny and I ain't trying to be disrespectful. I love you. But you can't teach me how to be a millionaire because you're not. You come from the working class and I'm not mad at you, mom. We wouldn't be where we are without you. But you told me that every generation is supposed to get better. So I'll take your values, but I won't take your work ethic. Because rich people don't work, they think. Poor people go, clock in, I make this much an hour. Rich people go, I put them to work, and I make this much an hour. <laughs> See, what happens is you're working for you and your family, one, they got 40 of you working at one time. So they giving you 20% and then they keeping the 80% off of 15,000 people. So what you have to decide is, are you gonna keep being the 99% or are you ready to be a part of the 1%? Because it doesn't make a difference where you come from high school dropout. It doesn't make a difference where you come from GED. It doesn't make a difference where you come from a 17 year old mom that got pregnant. It doesn't make a difference where you come from, it took 12 years to get a four year degree. It doesn't take a, make a difference. You know what makes a difference? What makes a difference is when you become a 99% or a 1%. And when I start thinking like, acting like, and behaving like a one percenter. So I went to every single class and when the teachers was talking, they thought I was just doing homework. I wasn't. I was listening to how they conjugate verbs. I was listening to how they tell stories. I was like, ooh, they, ooh. I peeped it out, y'all. They way more linear. So then I realized when you do corporate, it's A, B, C, D, E, F. It's one, two, three, four, five. It's topic, body, body, body. It's topic, support, 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 conclusion. I need your language, though, if I'm going to compete. I need your rules if I'm going to compete. I need your codes if I'm going to compete. The problem with most of you is you don't have a 1% language. You got a poverty language. There was a language that I needed to learn. Does it, does it mean I need to abandon the, learn, the language that I learned? Absolutely not. Don't be average, like for real, for real. Whatever it is you do, like do, like do it, do it, and take a different perspective. Listen to me very closely. The problem I have with most kids, if I tell you what it takes, most of you will die of exhaustion. You pass out before you reach 10,000 hours. You just pass out. You don't got the heart for it. You just don't have, you don't have the stamina for it. You just, you couldn't take what it really takes. Just for those of you who don't know, when they came from Africa and were enslaved, they didn't move them to San Diego. They wasn't doing God in San Diego. I just want to give you some perspective. They were in Mississippi, Alabama. It was smoking hot and they didn't quit and they didn't give up because they said, we're going to get to this for the next generation. Come on. Our Latino brothers and sisters who were migrant workers, they, come on, they in the heat. There wasn't no AC. And the stuff that y'all complain about, the stuff that y'all think is like hard, 